Okay, so we finished the unit with cube roots. So you'll need a calculator, uh, and if not, just follow me and I'll take you through it because he has you do some things on the calculator, but you don't necessarily need it, okay? So let's, uh, let's actually keep the calculator aside for now and try to do what we can without it, okay? So just like square roots, undo squaring. Okay, so cube roots undo the process of cubing. So let's just take a minute at the top and write what one cube is. So one cubed means one times one times one, which is one. Two cubed. So two cubed is two times two times two, which is two times two, four times two, eight. Uh, we can also cube negative 1, so negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. As I said before, with negatives, we like to use parentheses for multiplication. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, but when we multiply by negative 1, we get negative 1 as an answer. So positive 1 cubed is positive 1, but negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Let's see what negative 2 cubed is. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So with square roots, whether we squared a positive or negative, we always ended up with a positive answer. Okay? So we can only take the square roots of positives, but when we cube things, we can get both positive and negative answers. So therefore, we can take the cube roots of negatives because we can undo this and then it'll get us back to here. So down below, uh, he explains what a cube root is. So you can take a minute to read that. And then exercise one, it says, it's good to know some basic cube roots of smaller numbers. Find each of the following and justify by using a multiplication statement. So we just did this above. So we're just going to say this is 2 because we already shown the multiplication here. It's because 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 cubed is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of 1 is 1. Uh, we did that above. Now the cube root of 27. Hmm, so what number times itself three times? And it didn't jump too far. So let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So to go backwards, because I can rewrite this as 3 cubed, or 3 to the third power, the cube root of 27 is 3. Well, the cube root of 0 is 0, because 0 to the third power is 0. And then we did this above. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. That's because negative 1 cubed equals negative 1. And we also did this one above right here. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Okay, those are some small numbers. Okay, one of the most striking differences between square roots and cube roots is that you can find the cube root of negative real numbers, as we just saw at the top. For square roots, that will have to wait until we have non-real answers in algebra 2. So use your calculator. So I just want you to watch me. If you have one, feel free to take it out. So the cube root button. So square root is right here above. Let me move that up. It's, it's right above the x squared. To go to the cube root, we need to go to math. And you can see it's button number 4. Okay, the cube root. So we take the cube root of 343 and we get 7. Slide it over the cube root. So go to math, number 4. The cube root of negative 2774 is, mm, oh, I typed it in wrong. I was going to say, it should come out a whole number. Math, number 4, negative 2744. I had an extra 7 in there. So it's negative 14. And then the cube root of 
23. Good. Whoops. 23. So we can find the cube roots using the calculator. Now down at the bottom, these are not perfect cubes. So there is a chance that you can get a decimal and you'll have to round. But we're going to skip that. Okay. Let's go to the back where we can do some graphing. What does this function look like? All right, so the cube root operation gives rise to the cube root function. Like the square root function, so remember the square root function, let's give ourselves a picture of that. And we'll just do a basic one. So I had a starting point and then it was half of a parabola. Okay, so that's the square root function. Now we're going to take a look at the cube root function and we're going to use the table here and I like it because we have small x's filled in and we did this on the previous page. The cube root of 8 is negative 2, cube root of negative 1 was negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, now let's plot these points. So we're going to plot negative 8, negative 2. So left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, down 1, 2. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 8, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. Now it kind of looks like a stretched out S when you connect it. So just do your best. Let's start over here because it's going to continue on, right? We didn't list all of the domain and range, okay? So we're going to extend it and it kind of, you do want to give it that little curve there the best you can. So that's what it looks like. And I'll actually show you on your, the calculator if you don't have a calculator so you can get a better idea. going nice and slow. That does have that cur like S type look. Alright, the last one. Uh, we did the calculator piece, so good. So let's talk about the shift, right? We were talked about the shift in the last day of notes as we looked at the vertex form of the quadratic. In the shift and what we've learned, so then the function, if that's a positive 2, that's the shift left or right. So this should go opposite, left, 2 units, and then down, 4 units, from where we were here. So that's the standard or basic, most basic function, which is called the parent function of a cube root. Because there's nothing being added or subtracted, it's just the cube root. So, we have to fill out our values here, and we like taking the cube root of 8, 1, 27. So, to make this an 8 underneath, and start with a negative 8, because that's what we had up here, the first x I'm going to use is a negative 10, because negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. So, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 4 is a negative 6. And then I want a cube root of negative 1. That was the next number that followed up here. So what do I add to a positive 2 to get a negative 1? That would be negative 3. So cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 minus 4, which is a negative 5. We can, have, we can take the cube root of 0, because the cube root of 0 is 0. So let's do a negative 2, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Cube root is 0, 0, 0 minus 4, negative 4. To get the positive 1 this time, cube root of a positive 1, we need to put a negative 1 there. The cube root of 1 is 1, minus 4 is negative 3. And then to get an 8, we need a 6. Okay, so 6 plus 2 is 8, cube root of 8 is 2, 2 minus 4, negative 2. So let's graph it. So left 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Left, 3, down, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Left, 2, down, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
left one, down one, two, three, right six, one, two, three, four, five, six, down two. So let's try our best again to make that S. Whoops. Curve around and down. And then just make the dots a little bigger with arrows at the end because it keeps going. Now let's just take the point zero, zero. That was this point on this curve. It went right through zero, zero. Can I go left two down four and end up on the grid? Left one, two, down one, two, three, four. We do, it works out. Take the other point, which was one, one and negative one, one. So here's one, one, negative one. We'll just check these, the three points in that S part. So from here, left, one, two, down, one, two, three, four, right there. From here, left, one, two, down, one, two, three, four, right there. So it is the shift, okay? So describe how the graph you drew, oh, that's what we wrote up there, how it was shifted. The graph has been shifted. Two units left and four units down. And that finishes the unit.